Hey, cuties! In corporate American fashion, Life Wonders has decided to celebrate Christmas too early a second time this year. Let's see if these repackaged presents are worth opening under the Christmas tree. Lightning round! No new ARs this time, save for the commemorative one. Will they jingle your bells, though? Three, two, one, start! Let's move on. It's okay. Wow! It sure exists. See me after class. Well done, sport. C -c Clear! With that out of the way, let's go see what else is under the tree. In the midst of Christmas, trends can summon. Talk him off. You ever just stare at something for several minutes long and still not get it? If not, let's fix that by introducing you to Takamaru's art. Is that supposed to be sexy? His kit's even more confusing though. He specializes in thrust range damage, and you could leave it at that to understand he does not accomplish much. But it's made so much worse by not being remarkably high. Not being guaranteeable and requiring to move. Granted, there are other reasons to move him. Temporary extended movement, limited range, unguaranteeable amp, and limited range skill denial. Being able to disrupt the enemy without actually hitting them might be useful in cases you need to circumvent certain counter triggers, but Takamaru hasn't been used for those cases in the past four years, and probably will continue to be unused in the next four. I guess he's lying down to practice fitting in his coffin. Kalki! Behold, a prototypical column clear from an ancient era long forgotten. The four reliable strong column clears became a thing. Like other snipe column clears, Kalki has a menagerie of other supportive effects to justify the reduced damage, and perhaps to double up behind the shot column clear. He uniquely removes all his buffs and debuffs every turn to start, and he has a few amps at various reliabilities he can roll for every turn to regain them. For his own column, he'll nullify all defense buffs from the enemy, something a doubling column clear can exploit. He also has various heal tanking effects, including good self heal potential for each new buff he picks up. If you're lacking some reliable comm clears, or just want a bit more oomph with one of your columns, you can settle for these sloppy seconds. Tetsuya! Rather basic, innit? Tetsuya acts as a backline support, offering the allies in front of him damage amp, damage mitigation, healing, and charge fill. He also has some personal damage between his personal amp and starting charge fill. Could help if you want more damage just for the front row, or if you're planning to use him as a frontline magic damage dealer. He's a general purpose unit for both farming and challenges, a jack of all trades. Rather fitting for a gambler, but also quite the low roller with how safe he plays it. It's pretty unambitious. As forgettable as Tetsuya's personality or role in the story. Sit out of all the buff spreaders in the game, Citri is certainly one of the most forgettable. His move dependence should really close him in the same way it kills buff copiers. He'll ultimately be restricted to sharing buffs that Citri either naturally has, or gets from non-moving allies. His own buffs he shares is not that great. An amp, a heal, a rate boost, and a once phase damage denial. It's nice that the heal and rate boost are offered board wide on arrival though. From his quick fill charge he gains a handful of other nice effects, including another rate boost, another amp, and double hit. On the other hand, sharing buffs he gets from allies who give buffs is rather redundant for the most. As fancy as buff sharing sounds, in this case you won't be doing much tricks with it. But if you're just shopping around for a general purpose unit, the cat is fine too. Tonte! After all these years, Tonte still takes up real estate in my mind because of his one unique ability to remove all the buffs from his entire team at each new phase. There were only a few extremely rare cases where this could have been helpful over the last four years since his original release. It's still worth remembering just in case the sleeping dragon erupts once again, as no one else has edged him over in this one feature after all this time. His more common utilities of damage amp and healing are mired by abysmal rates and ranges. Not only patched up a bit with his lower rate double swing, you can boil him down to this. He removes debuffs, and he does some other stuff that's okay, sometimes. Can't wait to not use him for another four years. I hear. Ah, the original buff order. How oh, nostalgic. Nostalgia's all he gives though, cause he's more of a taker. I gear copies all buffs from the allies he moves beside, which is strong on paper, but is more situational than you'd think. 
The move condition, limited range, and status resistances really hold him back from reaching the heights of other mass buff related setups. Buff sharing has taken full bloom because of the ability to refresh buffs within them, which buff copying setups have not been able to enjoy. Having both buff copy and buff theft is unique to him. But stealing buffs has proven to be mostly irrelevant since enemy buffs are largely unpredictable and inferior to ally buffs. If you don't mind putting in the time and effort, you can reach thick game breaking damage with them. But don't let his charm fool you. He's not taking any trophies for practicality, hum. With all these evolutions, did this banner get the glow up worth the three years of waiting? Sadly, it's as if a puppy were put in Christmas packaging and you waited to open it three years later. It's dead on arrival, chief. While the ARs aren't the worst, they're also quite old. Most of you already have these. The transient summon is unremarkable even from its best pickings. So let's just leave it at that. Safe to skip both banners entirely. Sorry, not sorry, bar chasers. See you on the flip side, odd stuff.